My Good morning, gone. everyone. <laughs> it is Go lower. Thursday, uh, the 13th of June. Dylan is so tall, he was, uh, yeah. Cut off in Scott the didn't line. adjust the tripod for a tall Sorry, okay, person. We'll, we'll adjust it here. Okay, Sorry, okay, Dylan. Okay, okay. How, how high do you want us to there go? We go? There we go. Tall people problem. There yeah. we go. Yeah, seriously, there's a lot of those. All right. Okay. Well, Back we're live on program. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we uh, update you with our news and weather headlines every morning live on Facebook. It stays on your feed, though, throughout the day, so you can watch it whenever it works best for you or check it out as podcasts. We post it at inform.com slash podcast. Look for the Inform Minute or anywhere you find your podcast. All right, Dylan, now that you look good, you're framed up on the camera <laughs> Thank here. You. Thank you. Uh, give us a little bit of the forecast. It's going to be windy today, not as warm as yesterday, right? You just gave the forecast. Okay. What am I here? Okay, for? we're done. See we're done. done. See Goodbye. Yeah, uh, yesterday we had the cold front push on through. And uh -huh. hit up to 97 in Fargo. Yeah, it was hot. Yeah, 90 Detroit Lakes, Fergus Falls, a whole lot of 90s in Wapaton. So a warm day yesterday, warmest day of the year, hot day, some may say. And then uh, <laughs> thunderstorms rolled on through, had some hailers, eastern portions of the brewing area, and then a report of a funnel cloud up in Cavalier. Yeah. Um, but really, most of the strong weather missed us. We had hail, but other than that, nothing was super heavy. Um, today, just windy, cooler. Still warm, 80 degrees, but windy. Yeah. Tomorrow looks warm without the wind. Okay. That'll be nice. Yeah. Be and then heading on into the weekend, starting to get into an unsettled weather pattern. Well, many chances of rain. You're probably at your one location, you know, at your home. You're probably not going to get hit by every single rain chance, but there are a lot of chances mm. in the 10 day forecast. Okay. So looking pretty active here. Moving on into early next week. We had All a right. short break. Have yeah, we did. Break. Oh, I know, sorry. right? It was like a week. Maybe, yeah. maybe a week and a half and right back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's about we just got a little break. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> okay. We'll take what we can get. Yeah, right. Thanks, Dylan. Yep. Uh, a story new for you this morning. We're learning about a police chase that ended with a vehicle on fire. It all started with uh, when law enforcement tried to pull over an SUV near Felton, Minnesota in Clay County. Uh, yesterday afternoon, it happened. Then it continued on from Clay County into Cass County continued on to Richland County, mm -hmm. so several counties. Uh, that's when the SUV went off the road, got stuck in a field close to Walcott. The driver got out, ran away. Shortly after that, though, the SUV caught on fire. Multiple elements to this story. Yeah, a lot uh, going on. So then, of course, they had to put out the fire. Uh, a search team had to be used, a canine and a drone, to find uh, the person who was driving that vehicle. Uh, they arrested 43-year-old Mark Crompton, uh, they say he was hiding in a motorhome that was in the driveway of another home in the area. Uh, he was arrested on three outstanding warrants from Grand Forks, uh, but of course, more charges are likely uh, involved in the chase, property damage, and trespassing. A uh, police squad car was badly damaged in a crash in Grand Forks. It happened just, bef uh, just before 11 at the intersection of Gateway Drive and Stanford Road. The officer was passing through the intersection when they say 37-year-old Mark Mondor attempted to turn left, smashed into the squad car. Mondor ended up being arrested for DUI. The winner of the Republican primary for U.S. House in North Dakota says she wants the person behind election interference in her race held responsible. On Tuesday, some voters received a text message saying Julie Fedorchek was dropping out of the race. She says she's going to file a complaint with the Federal Election Commission, possibly even police, about the misinformation. Rick Becker, who was running against Fedorchek, denies any knowledge of who sent out that text. All right, following his victory, Representative Kelly Armstrong sat down with one of our own at Forum Communications. It's all part of a new series on WDAY Plus called Off the Record. The series takes a look at people who are considered, you know, leaders and in the news a lot and kind of just looks into their personal life and gives more of that perspective of who they are. So kind of cool. You can check it out right now over on our website, inforum.com. President Joe Biden is in Italy today where he'll meet with European and Canadian leaders for the G7 summit. At the meeting, Biden and the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky are expected to sign a major long-term security agreement. It comes as the U.S. widens its sanctions against Russia and as Russian warships arrive in Cuba, of course, just a mere 100 miles off the Florida coast. All right, today at Hot Mike, Sam Gettenzinger is in for Dom, I believe. So he's going to be talking about uh, the Florida Panthers, and they have a two-game lead on the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup Final. Game three is tonight. It's going to be in Alberta, Canada. The Oilers are hoping to bounce back in front of their home crowd tonight. Coverage of the game starts at 7 o'clock on our station, WDAY. 
Uh, and remember, uh, now is a great time to get your Inforum.com subscription. Of course, all access past all of our news and weather headlines. Uh, 99 cents a month for your first three months. It's a great deal. Uh, go to Inforum.com slash subscribe to check it out. And then join us the rest of the day for our newscasts. Our next one's at 11, then 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And we'll be back tomorrow morning with first news from 5 to 7. Have a great day, everyone.